Now the last episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That was stupid. I actually just talked about how to mimic a multi-camera interview with only one camera system. Now, surprisingly, that video actually did super well, so I decided to do one better. And this is gonna be how you can use a dual camera interview completely by yourself. Let's just get into it. Now, obviously with two camera interviews, you're going to have an A cam and you're going to have a B cam. Now, for general purposes, your A camera is gonna be the thing that's gonna be more fully featured. It might have things like built-in NDs, or maybe it has a better codec, or maybe it has better color science, or more importantly, it has the audio source that you're going to need to connect to. Your A camera is usually gonna be the more expensive guy or something that you use all the time as your Swiss Army knife. Now, your B camera is gonna kind of be like the Robin to your Batman. Now, in a deal situation, you kind of want to have two Batmans. Your B camera might have slightly less features, but it's going to be designed to match well with your A camera. And sometimes they're the same brand, and sometimes they're different brands entirely. In fact, in this example, I am using my Red Komodo X. Now, this is going to be my A camera because not only do they fix a lot of the audio issues and just having them in general on the system, but it's also going to be the camera between that and my FX30 that's going to have the obvious raw codec that's going to be in it, so it's flexible, it has better dynamic range, and it's going to have better color science. Overall, it's going to be my main driver of professional work, and my FX30 is going to be my B camera. Now, the FX30 is no slouch. It's still going to have a downsampled 4K sensor from 6K. It does have that 10 bit color with S Log 3 for a great dynamic range. And at the same time, it's also going to have autofocus. Now, keep in mind your A camera and your B camera, you might not be able to operate simultaneously. So, being able to rely on something like autofocus on the Sony FX30 takes a lot of the pressure off in your shot, especially when it's going to be a camera that might be off to the side. Now, something you also want to keep in mind is going to be your lens choices between your A camera and your B camera. Now, this is just a guideline, not necessarily a rule of thumb, but I like to make sure that my A camera is a little bit of a wider lens, and then I actually go to something more telephoto and tighter on my B camera. Now, different combinations are going to work in different situations, but one thing you could do is you could always try to keep two steps up in terms of the lens focal length in terms of how wide or how tight it goes. So let me just give you an example. So for example, if my A camera is going to be 24 millimeters, I might have my B camera at 50. If I want to go 35 I might have my B camera at 85 and if I want to go 50 it might be more than 85. Now it might be useful to keep those jumps a couple of steps away instead of using a 24 and a 35 or 35 and a 50 even though you're gonna have cameras that are fairly close to each other using different focal lengths help vary up the image and make things more engaging. Now dealing with two different cameras you also might have differences in how it interprets information. First of all your white balance might not be the same between each camera. If I set both these guys up to 5600 it might actually look like a slightly different temperature depending on which camera you're going to be using. And that's why I'm going to use one of these guys. Now, this is just a color checker passport, and I'll leave a link in the description down below, but I use this if I need to match cameras, whether they're the same brand or they're going to be different brands. Now, I want to match my white balance. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this side, and I want to make sure that I get a shot on each camera so when I do set it up and I have to match it in post, it makes my life a heck of a lot easier. Then there's also going to be the color side as well. Now, this is going to be great when you want to match up colors, you want to move things back and forth in order to make the cameras match a little bit better. Now, you can use this in conjunction with a plugin called Cinematch by Film Convert. Now, I have done a video earlier on matching all the Sony cameras together, but it works kind of the same way with the Red Komodo X and the Sony FX30. But it's also good practice and incredibly useful if you use one of these guys for each camera while you're trying to match things up while you're on set. Okay, so in a two camera interview, you could always just use two tripods, but that would be a little bit boring. Now, not the sponsor of this video, but Zeepin did send me a slider in order for me to use this on my B camera for that second angle and to add a more dynamic look. Now, they also sent me the Axis Pan Tilt slider as well, so I could use this to create something called a parallax look, where my subject is going to be in the middle and the background is going to be moving around them. Now, this slider does have a ton of mounting points, so if you do want to put it on a tripod, you definitely can with the supports that come with this system, or you could use two light stands and you could put it on the mounting points on the end. Now, because I got the longer model, I kind of prefer the light stand situation. So I actually put these on two stands in order for it to be perfectly balanced as everything else should be. Now, what's really dope about the Zeepin slider and the Axis Pan Tilt Head is the fact that both can connect on an iPhone app in order for you to control it without having to manually press the buttons on the system itself. Now, it is cool that you can do it manually or you could do it from a phone, but using the app is really easy to use and it's incredibly quick. I can set my in and my out points and I can make sure that I have my speed dialed and I can set the settings on the pan tilt head as well in order to create some interesting looks. Now, when you are using the app, you actually get a couple of more points that you could set to rather than just the A and the B point that's going to be when you're using it manually. Now, for the purpose of this interview, I am going to set up the slider that as it moves from point A to point B, I'm going to keep my subject relatively in the same spot. 
Now, when you do have some background elements that are going to be in your shot, you're going to notice that the background is going to move, but the appearance of your subject staying the same place is going to be there, which is that parallax movement, which is really dynamic and it makes that second angle of your interviews look that much better. Now, I have used a slider on a couple of different projects and it's pretty handy and it does give you a pretty good look. Now, there are three caveats with this that A, I hope they change and B, might impact the length of the slider that you're going to get. Now, this is a great slider, especially given the price point in comparison to some of the other sliders that are on the market. However, no piece of equipment is entirely perfect. Now, the slider version that I have is a little bit on the longer side, and it also doesn't come with a carrying case, so you get to find out another solution or to move this from place to place. There's also one more thing. Now, I am going to be using a longer lens, so I am going to be a little bit farther away. However, this slider is a little bit on the noisy side. Check this out. Now, that might get a little bit annoying for some people that actually want to have a very quiet set. Also, if you can't hear in your microphone, which is kind of unlikely, I didn't get any audio in there, but it is annoying for everybody else that's going to be around it. Now, this might also be good for something like product shots where you don't actually need to get audio, so you don't have to worry about that humming sound in the background. However, for some people that are doing interview footage, it might be something you want to consider, but ultimately, when I start editing my footage, there's not that much of a sound. It's just annoying more for me when I'm actually on set. But aside from that, this actually is a great slider other than that noise that comes out and the fact that it's huge but you know at least one of those two things going in. Now, when dealing with two camera interviews, the first thing you're gonna wonder is where does the audio go? Now, the audio is actually gonna go into my A-cam, the RED Komodo X. And one thing that I will hand it to RED is they did fix the Komodo audio issue where you couldn't put XLR ports on the camera itself. Now, they're not native to the body, but you can pick up one of these guys, which gives you the extra channels to have XLR audio on your camera setup. That way I can get both my XLR audio options on there and get professional sounding sound. Now, one thing I wanna mention is you always wanna make sure that you have double audio at the very least. And I like to go with a boom mic and a lavalier mic option to see which one's going to be better in post and also make sure that I have a backup. Now the boom mic that I am going to be using, I have made a little bit of a switch and that's actually going to be the MKE 600 by Sennheiser. Now this is going to be a high quality mic, it is battery operated but it gives you really really good and professional sound without costing as much as the MK416 which is also good because I lost my MK416. And I'm also gonna go with my old faithful, which is going to be the Sennheiser G4 lavalier system. These guys have been really sturdy, they sound really good, and it's great for making professional sound. Now with your last system, you wanna make sure that it doesn't move as much as possible. And with your boom mic, you wanna put it slightly overhead enough to get sound, because the closer you are, the better it's going to sound. But at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're moving it out of the shot. Now those are just some basics that you might wanna consider, but there are a bunch of different videos on how to set up your audio properly, in terms of making sure that the distance is away, and to make sure that your lav mic doesn't rust while you're getting audio. Now, in terms of syncing the two cameras from an audio perspective, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can use a time code generator, which is going to be the traditional and the more professional way of doing things. However, not every camera is going to have time code with it. And sometimes you just need a sound that you can sync to while you're going to be in post. And that's where you have things like a clap sync. Now, it is not the most professional thing in the world. It's literally just clapping in front of your camera so you pick up on the waveform and that you could sync into post. And if you're somebody that doesn't have time code because you might be filming by yourself, using a clap sync is just fine. You're just gonna have to line those things up in post, which we'll show you a little bit later. Okay, so this is going to be the sponsor of this video and it's going to be audio. Now, I've been using audio for a lot of my YouTube videos over the last couple of months. In fact, I actually use them for every single video over the last couple of months. Audio has an amazing library of tracks that are going to be great for you to use on your channel and some of your projects as well in the real world because apparently YouTube is fake. And you're not only going to get a bunch of really good tracks that you can use for your channel and your projects, but there's also a sound effect library as well. So if you're somebody that's bad at sound design just like I am, you actually have some things that you can work with. Now, one of the big things that I do love about audio in general is the fact that they have a membership subscription that doesn't actually go monthly. Where on audio, you can get a year-long membership or you can get a lifetime membership. Because right now, if you wanna get your first year for 60 bucks on audio, you can just use my code either on the screen or in the description down below and you can save a ton of money to get really great music that you can use for your channel and your video projects. A special shout out to Audio for sponsoring this video, but we're just gonna move on to the video and some of the next steps 
steps that you're going to need to know. Now let's talk about lighting. Now your lighting technique is actually going to be pretty similar to the previous video. You want to light from the window that you can't see in order to motivate light and give you a little bit more wrap and control the overall exposure on your interview subject. And then using things like backlights and bounce lights or using something in the background to pop your subject off the background is also going to be a welcome feature as well. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about here is also the placement of where you're going to put your subject. Now, when working with a bigger room, you want to make sure that you're moving off the walls to add more depth into your scene. Because you're going to be shooting interview footage, it is a little bit easier to use things like prime lenses with higher apertures and using that on your slider as well with the autofocus. That way you could shoot at things like f1.8 or f2 and you could add some depth in some defocused areas and you could do it quite easily because you're going to be stationary. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move my subject a little bit closer to the middle of the room, but make sure that I'm still framing it up so it's in the corner and still lighting from the window that I can't see in order to add as much depth into my interview footage as humanly possible. Now my key light where I'm going to use here is going to be my Nanlite 720B. Now this might be a little bit overkill, especially for indoors. Lights with this type of voltage power is going to be used more for overpowering sunlight. So if I did have a strong sunlight in my scene and I exposed from my windows, this would come in handy. However, in most situations while you're inside, you don't need a light this bright, but I, I do really like it. And I love the fact that it is bicolor, so it adjusts to the different scenarios that I might have, and it also has a lot of power as well. You also get a Bowens mount so I can attach a simple umbrella softbox onto here to give me a nice soft light for my subject. Now my second light or my background light is going to be the Nanlite 60B. This is also a bicolor light as well so it stays in my kit as a backup light or something that I need in a pinch as a key light. But this also is a really great light if you're on a budget and you need something to key your subject. Now this light is incredibly versatile and there are other features as well that make this thing incredibly useful, but I do want to talk about this just in the context of using it as a light to pop my subject off the background. Now, I typically don't put a softbox on this guy. I'm just going to use the reflector that it comes with in order to have a direct light to go to the back of my subject in order to give me that little bit of a pop. And because we're so far away from the wall in our room, not only are we gonna get a lot of depth, but now you really get that 3D pop look that you're looking for while using your key light and your backlight at the same time. Now, where your position and where your camera's positioning is going to be incredibly important as well. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to shoot from the shadow side. And when working with two different cameras, it might be a little bit confusing, but this actually is gonna make a little bit of sense. Now, you're going to have your key light on one side, obviously, and then you're also going to have your backlight on another side. And where I like to place myself is going to be between the camera that's closest to my key light and the key light itself. Now, I can still shoot a little bit on the other side of my key light as long as I don't break that invisible line that cuts the scene in half. However, I want to make sure that where I'm pointing the camera, it's going to be on shadow side, but at the same time where I'm positioned, my subject is going to be looking at me while I'm asking and going back and forth in questions. So you want to make sure that your subject's not too far turned over, but at the same time, their face isn't turned towards the light because that's just going to ruin the trick for you, and it also might not look the most flattering in the world. Now, this video is running a little bit long in the tooth, but once you have all of your footage, it's going to be very easy for you to match up colors and to match up your white balance using Cinematch and also using that gray card that we talked about before. Now, you just have to make sure that you have a shot of each one, make sure it's properly exposed, and you can match both shots up with the gray card side in order to get the proper white balance. And then if you need to match the colors to make your life easier, you can use Cinematch, and I'll leave a link in the description down below, but also a video on how to match pretty much any camera. Now, these two methods aren't necessarily a perfect science. You still might need adjustments for either one, depending on your situation. Sometimes it doesn't work right off the bat, and sometimes it works perfectly. That being said, I didn't want to let this video drag on for too long, but if you do want a part two about some of the matching and also how to do some of the post-production, leave a comment down below because, I don't know, this subject is pretty lengthy, it's a pretty dense topic, but I didn't want to load too much information for one video. That being said, I'll see you guys in the comment section. Special shout out to Audio for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I gotta go to the other half of the country now, so I'm out of here. Peace.